everywhere we go, I want to introduce my little wife to you. Shug, would you stand up? <laughs> 67 years. And we dated four and a half before that. <laughs> I was the only boy she dated, and she was the only girl I dated. Right. Yep. We met as a Christ ambassador for Assembly of God in Freeport, Texas. That's where I got saved and where she got saved. Her mother, mother and father were ch charter members of that church back in the 30s. Everywhere we go, people want to know our age and all about us, so I'm going to give you that statistic, and then we're going to get into to business. I'm 88, she's 84. <laughs> and we're both still breathing air. Amen. And we'll, we, we'll keep on. I've been serving the Lord 77 years, and she's been, she's over more than that. Now that we got the statistics out of the way, I want to get down to, to the important subject. And that's the ministry of Royal Rangers. I'm going to give you a little bit about my background so you'll understand where I'm coming from. My mother was born and raised on a circus. Her father had one of the largest circuses in the United States in the late 1800s and early 1900s. He was a womanizer. Circus people have no morals and no integrity. No church knowledge, no church attendance, no Bible knowledge. So that's how she was raised. That's how she was trained. Now how she met my father, I don't know. But they married. And nine years later, I was born. When I was nine months old, she met another man and left with him and took me along as baggage. I have never, my, my, my biological father abandoned me. I never heard the words, I love you, from him, my life. I never received a hug from that man my entire life. I'm sure I did from my mother, but I don't remember, remember it. She married this man, and they lived together for over 60 years, very happy. But that man was not my biological father. And he and I had zero father-son relationships. He was, he was not bad to me. He was a good man. But he did a few things that uh, upset me. I remember when I was five years old, he and I was walking through a field and it was full of flowers, and I was fast, fascinated. A big old bumblebee was going from flower to flower, and I was looking at it, and he says, catch it, it'll make good fish bait. Have you ever blown up a rubber glove? The thing that hurt was he laughed at me for being so stupid. He did several things like that a bio biological father wouldn't do. I never heard the words, I love you, all the years I was growing up from him. I never received a hug from that man all the years I was growing up. I got saved at age 11 at a vacation Bible school at First Seminary Garden, Freeport, Texas. And there was a godly man in the church. Brother Jack Fellers, that took me under his wing. 
And every time I go to church, he was a big man. He had polio when his child's left hand was unusable. His right foot was, had, it was a lot shorter than the left foot, and he had a big heel and sole on it, walked with a limp, had a Santa Claus type laugh. He was old in the late 20s. And to me, as an 11 year old, that was old. But every time I go to church, he'd pull me up alongside of him. And he'd look down and say, Carraf, I love you, and Jesus loves you. I didn't miss a service. Can you relate? Been there, done that. Praise the Lord. I'm glad. Uh, and you're still breathing air, too. That's great. That man would play games with we boys up behind the church, had a little patch of ground grass and mean it and he would catch get the ball bat and hit it take off running and fall and lay there and laugh like Santa Claus big old belly and just bounced I watched everything that man did I listened to everything he had to say and I determined at age 12 that I was going to grow up and be like that man and someday I was going to work with boys. Now this is in 42. Royal Rangers did not exist. But that's when I joined Royal Rangers at age 12. I watched how he treated his family, his wife, and his children. He did it with love. He was good to them. He took care of them. And I set a goal to be like that man. I'm nothing like my biological father or my stepdad. Nothing. But I am like a godly man. 30 years later, I was sitting on a Sunday God church pew with my wife and three children. And the, the lead minister made an announcement that the Sunday God had a program. I don't like that word. It's a ministry, not a program. That's right. That's right. And they're having a it's a, it's a camping program. My family and I had camped for many, many times. We, that was right down my alley. But when he described what the Royal Rangers was, I looked at my wife and I said, that's my calling. That's what I decided at age 12. The next day I was at the leadership training course 30 miles away. There's 13 of us and I was the only graduate. And my wife and I, our shirt tails hadn't hit our backs, side since. <laughs> and I've read the Bible through several times, and I can't find anything there that says anything about retirement. <laughs> Not a thing. Now, that gives you a little bit of an idea about my background. It's, it's a lot worse than that, to be frank with you. I was an unwanted child. They didn't want me. When I was 12, they took me to Uncle, Uncle Jess Weeks' farm up in Lampasas, and we lived in Freeport, Texas. Actually, it was Alaska then, they changed the name. And I worked there the summer. 
I didn't make any money that's, that summer. I did get room and board, and that's it. Came time for, uh, when I was there, I didn't get one single letter, phone call, or visit from my mother, my stepdad, or my biological father. When it came time to school, I realized everyone was going to come get me. So I tied knots in my pants leg and shoved my clothes in the, in, in the, in the legs and walked about a mile to the highway and I hitchhiked from the lamp passes to Freeport. You can't do it nowadays, but you can then I could. I stepped in there and they were eating. I hadn't eaten all day because I didn't have any money. They didn't get up from the table and greet me. My stepdad looked and said, what are you doing here? That's the kind of greeting I got. My bed was a quilt on the floor, no pillow, for about three years. When I got that bed, man, I loved it. It was great. When I was in first and second grade, they took me to live with my grandmother, a precious woman that I really do love, or did love. She's gone now. Two years. I did not receive one letter, one phone call, or a visit from my mother, my biological father, and my stepdad. Each summer, something like that happened. So you see, I was an unwanted child, and I realized that, and I knew it. But that godly man showed me what love was. And he showed it how he treated his wife and children. And that's what I've done. Now, I told you that for a reason. The children, let me back up a minute. The first assembly of God when I was 11 years old, it was a church of about 180 average attendance and average number of children. I was the only one there, only child in that church that was not living under the roof with both biological parents. Now, in 1931, divorce was frowned upon by society. It was not accepted. Now it's pretty common. I represented probably one, maybe one and a half percent of the number of children in the ch church. Today, the average of children who are fatherless is 67%. They're living in homes, houses, not homes, in houses. The parents don't know beans and buttonholes about how to raise a child. Because they weren't. We're all Ranger leaders of nineteen of twenty nineteen are godly men. And women just like that man was to me. They're reaching boys and girls that have a worse life than I had. 